our organization, Classic Community Legal Services and Counseling Center, has been growing over the past several years. And currently we have a staff of 21. It's a combination of full and part-time staff. And we have over 100 volunteers uh, that provide counseling and legal services to our clients. Volunteer attorneys um, at Classic are a very special mix of, a, of of people. We have some volunteers that take a case from start to finish. We have other attorneys that work on specific parts of cases. It's sort of a continuing process for everybody. We have four different legal units and we have family law, disability, housing, and immigration. Immigration is our largest legal unit. Considering the recent changes in our immigration policies and the executive orders, we are really trying to see how it's going to unfold. We have already seen some of the impacts and negative impacts of that on our clients, but I think it's just a multi-layered or multifaceted issue because on one hand, it it's affecting your funding and your ability to maintain staff and provide services. On the other hand is how your clients are being impacted by these changes. I have clients who are concerned about their families back home. I have one specific client, she has family in Syria and she is really concerned, can they come here? It, she, she feels like she should have applied for them earlier and now it's very uncertain if she can even bring them over. Although she's a citizen, she's still very much concerned. A lot of our clients may not speak English or really be able to, if they are questioned, they may not understand what's going on. I have worries about my clients who have children. There's a full gamut of concerns that our clients are facing now. A lot of the domestic violence victims have services they can access, but asylum seekers in particular, it's much harder. We feel like there's only going to be restrictions put on the system right now rather than opening it up and making it more accessible for some people to be able to get benefits. One of my most challenging cases was a woman with four children um, who had been a long-term domestic violence situation and the children had reacted to that. And as a result of that, they had a lot of behavioral problems um, and acting out. The case went on for a really long time. There was a criminal case involved against the abusive husband. The pressure of the criminal case um, was so intense on my client and the defense counsel was threatening to put the kids on the stand in the criminal case. And so she sort of had to make a decision, was she going to go forward with the criminal case or not? And she decided not to because of her children. She was not able to work. She wound up on disability. She lost her house. This woman and the family lost every single thing that they had. And she was the most amazing client. She pulled herself back. She gathered her kids back together. She now has custody of the children. She is living in, in supported housing. And the kids are doing fabulous. One of them the, is a senior in high school, just got into a great college. And the kids are thriving, and she's thriving. I can think of a client who received both, actually, legal and mental health services. He was abducted at night from his home and he was originally from an African country. And it was really through a chain of events that I would call a miracle that he was able to come to the U.S. But once he got to our services, he was brought by a community member. For the first nine months that I worked with this individual, he did not utter a word. He was so traumatized that he could not speak. He did not have the most basic concepts such as what a day is, what a week is, what a calendar is, what a, because he was just being kept in these conditions of even for months and months not seeing the daylight. After years of working with him, of course, he was able to obtain asylum. So he had his legal status. And on the men mental health side of things, we once he started to stabilize, we arranged for him to uh, get his GED. Today, he is a nurse. He went to school, he went to college, became a nurse, and he is one of the most caring individuals that I have met in my life. Also, amazingly, I think for all the years that he was silenced and could not speak, and also what he could not really express to us in the beginning, now he is the most eloquent poet 
And he has this book of poems that are so beautiful and so profound. And I think to me that speaks about the resiliency of human spirit. And I think for me at least, this is why we are in this line of work. What we do is to uphold and respect the dignity of humans, human beings, and to be the defenders of human rights and social justice. So I think this is our mission and we are all fighting for that in whatever capacity that we work.